This lesson is for FST Lesson 3.3 on Translations of Data. Yesterday we talked about translating coordinates, graphs, and equations using a translation rule. Mathematically we were adding or subtracting to get the coordinates, graphs, or equations to shift or slide. When we're translating data we will add a number onto the data. And then our job today is to determine how the measures of center and the measures of spread are affected. Let's quickly review the three measures of center. They are the mean, the median, and the mode. Real quickly, the definition of those. Mean is the average. Take all the pieces of data, add them up, and divide by however many pieces there are. The median is the middle number. Make sure when you find the middle number that you've put the numbers in order first. The mode is the number that appears the most often or the most frequently, keep in mind that sometimes there is no mode. Symbol-wise, on your calculator, when you go to one variable statistics, you'll be able to identify the mean as being x with a bar over it. And if students need help finding one variable statistics on their calculator, they're more than willing, more than encouraged to come and see me and I'll show them on their calculator. The measures of spread, there are four of them. Range, IQR, standing for interquartile range. Variance, which is something that we get along the way to calculating the standard deviation. We will review standard deviation by hand today, so if you need a refresher on that, you'll get it today in this lesson. Quick reminder here on the range, range is max minus min. IQR is Q3 minus Q1. You can't find the quartiles until you find the median first. The variance is the standard deviation squared, and the standard deviation when you go to one variable statistics on your calculator is S with an X next to it. So today we're going to be looking at how the measures of center and the measures of spread are affected when we calculate data and add a number onto the data. One piece of information that's new today is the word invariant. When things vary, V-A-R-Y, they change. If things are invariant, they don't change. So we're going to try to figure out which of the measures of center and the measures of spread are invariant. We're going to figure this out today based on the information in number three and they give us this list of data. One thing I'd encourage students to do whenever they're given a list of data is to put it in order. I can see here in the list that median is one of our things we're going to have to do and in order to do median you gotta put them in order anyway so it's just a good habit to get into. To find the range you do the max minus the min so I'm just gonna simply calculate that. I am gonna show my work here because it's my notes but if this were a homework question I would know that the answer was 70 without having to show my work. The mode here is the most often number, the most number that appears the most often and that's the 100. The median is the middle number. The middle of five things is easy to identify. The mean is adding all these up and dividing by 5. So I've got 100 plus another 100 is 200 plus another 100 is 300 plus 20 is 320 plus 80 is 400 plus 50 is 450. Divided by 5, it's the same as 45 divided by 5, which I know is 9, and there's a 0 on the end. Variance and standard deviation, we need to do a little bit of calculating there. First, let's list our data vertically makes things a little bit easier to keep track of. The first step of calculating standard deviation is to subtract the data from the mean. The mean is 90, so I'm going to do 50 minus 90, and I'm going to write down the results. 80 minus 90, 100 minus 90, and 120 minus 90. After you've subtracted from the mean, you square your results. Once you've squared them, you're going to add them up and then divide by n minus 1. 
Some lessons teach that you should be dividing by n. Some lessons teach you should divide by n minus 1. You should ask your teacher which way you're supposed to go on this. I'm going to encourage my students. We only learned one formula, and that was to divide by n minus 1. So we would divide here by 4. So I get the number 700, and that is the variance. To get the standard deviation, you simply square root that. You should pay attention to what they tell you to round to. There is no instruction here, so I'm going to round to whatever I choose, which in this case would be to the tenth. Now we're going to take the data for part B, and we're going to add a number onto all of the pieces of data. So my data changes to the list of 51.5, 81.5, 101.5, 5 twice, and 121.5. So now let's recalculate all of the values and see how they are affected. The range is max minus min. The mode is still the most often number. Median is the middle. The mean, I am going to need to add these up, and I've added them in advance. And let's go ahead and calculate variance and standard deviation. So I'm going to take my list and rewrite it again vertically. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract the mean from each of these. So I'm going to take away 91.5 from all of those numbers that I just listed. And now that I've done that, I can see that I will arrive at exactly the same answer because I just got the same differences when I calculated. So I know the variance here will continue to be 700, and the standard deviation will again be square root of 700, which is 26.5. So now let's analyze our results. Notice that the range, the variance, and the standard deviation were all the same between the two sets. Even though we changed the data, the range, the variance, and the standard deviation remained unchanged. So let's go ahead and make a note of that. The range, the variance, and the standard deviation are all measures of spread. So when you add a number onto data, the measures of spread will continue to be invariant. They will not be changed. So you will not add h onto the measures of spread. The measures of center, rather than recalculating all of these values, we simply could have taken the previous values and simply added 1.5 onto them. So I'm going to just utilize that information moving forward. With the measures of center, if I know that the data has been transformed, I can simply transform those values by simply adding h onto them. So now let's work on number 8 from the homework. First thing students are going to have to do is make a dot plot of the original scores here in blue and the transformed scores here in green. Students should take a moment to do that now on their own. They will appear in the video shortly. So here's my blue original dot plot and my new transformed green dot plot. Notice that they do look identical to each other. The only thing that has changed is the number line at the bottom. Now let's try to identify what transformation got us from the original to the new. So if you look at 2, 2 turned into 10, 3 turned into 11, 7 turned into 15, and so on. So what happened was all the x's got added 8. So now we're going to find the interquartile range, the mode, the mean, and the median for the original scores. What I'd recommend here is that you make a list of all the data so that you can find the median. So our first score was a 2, then we had 2 people who got 3's, 3 people who got 7's, 2 people who got 8's, and 6 people who got 10's. So now let's count and see how many pieces of data we have and there are 14. So the middle of 14 things is going to be in between the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th, and 8th numbers. So the median will be in between those two. Since they are the same, we know the median is going to be the number 8. 
Now to find quartile 1, I find the median of the lower half. The lower half contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers, so the fourth number will be quartile 1. Similarly, in the upper half, I want to find quartile 3, which is the middle of the upper half. So I count to the 1, 2, 3, 4th number in. So if I find the interquartile range, it's those two numbers subtracted, so that value will be a 3. The mode is the number that appears the most often, that's clearly the 10. The mean, I would have to add all these up and divide by 14, and when you do that you get 7.5. Finally, the median we already found to be the value 8. Now instead of recalculating everything for the new green scores after they've been transformed, we're simply going to determine which of these scores we should add 8 onto and which ones will remain unchanged. So as we look at the interquartile range, that is a measure of spread and that should remain unchanged. So the IQR should stay at 3. The mode, the mean, and the median are all measures of center and we should add 8 onto all of those. So the new mode should be 18, the new mean should be 15 and a half, and the new median should be 16. So that saves us a ton of time if we can utilize that information moving forward. Rather than having to recalculate the new information, we can simply use the transformation data and our notes from today. I would encourage students to complete question number nine next because it is a lengthy problem.